Good afternoon everyone! In today's video, I'd like to show you how you can use some very simple ThinkScript to define the PE ratio inside of Thinkorswim. Now while you can get this ratio on other websites and sources, things like the Wall Street Journal, Yahoo Finance, a lot of different online sites have them, I think there's two key benefits to plotting this inside of Thinkorswim. The first benefit is you get context, you get historical data, and you can see how that PE ratio has fluctuated over time. And I think that context is a very key missing piece, which inside of Wall Street Journal or Yahoo Finance or whatever source you might be using, you usually only see what the PE ratio is at that current present moment. You can't see what it has been and how it has moved over time. So I think context is one key benefit here that Thinkorswim offers. The second benefit is that you can interact with this PE ratio and you can actually run some basic calculations on it and you can also uh, coordinate that with things like indicators and say technicals like a setup that we're looking at inside of Starbucks right here on the charts. So this is where you can combine things like is a stock undervalued using the PE ratio plus do we have a technical setup where the two combine together to provide a pretty nice combination especially in the current market conditions. That's at least my thinking behind why I think you might find the PE to be useful. Now one quick caveat before we move forward. You cannot use the PE ratio to value certain companies of course it goes without saying that if the earnings are negative this value will be kind of useless really for the most part and you'll see that on certain stocks. I'll show you an example once we have this built. So that's one thing to keep in mind is that you can't really use the PE on all of the stocks in the universe. However, for the stocks where the PE ratio does make sense, where you have predictable earnings, where the PE ratio has traditionally just been a good valuation metric, I think you'll find this exercise to be very useful. So let's get started here with writing some code. I'll first click the studies icon and then click create here. Now before I define the code, let me first write this out so we can break this out. For the PE ratio, we have price in the numerator, and then we have earnings in the denominator. And this is earnings for the past 12 months, trailing 12 months. Now for our price, we already have this value built inside of Thinkorswim by referencing the close variable. And that you can see plotted in that default code right here, the close value. So that's our numerator already squared away for us. However, for the earnings value in the denominator, we need to calculate this. To calculate this, we can use the get actual earnings function, which is a function inside of Thinkorswim, but that function only returns true when we have an earnings day. Whenever we don't have an earnings day, that function returns nan, and so we need to account for that as part of our code. Once we do use that get actual earnings function, we need to then take the sum for the past year. So 252 trading days, we will need to take the sum of that get actual earnings function for the past 252 bars. So that's the game plan here. So let's start by writing this out. I'll first give this indicator a name. So I'll say PE ratio. And we can start by defining first that earnings value. So I'll start by saying def earnings value. And here we can say if is nan get actual earnings, then return zero, else return get actual earnings. Now let me first show you what this looks like. So if I plot this out here, add chart bubble, uh, and I'll say yes, or actually <clears throat> earnings value, plot this out at the closing price, when or what do we want to see inside of the bubble, earnings value, and then color.yellow. This is so you can see what this looks like. You can see what that earnings value returns. We get the same EPS values that we see right down here, 0 0.32, 0 0.32, negative 0.46, negative 0.46, 0.51, 0 0.51, and this bubble only plots whenever we actually have the earnings date. So that's how we've now taken care of the is nan part for whenever there's no earnings value. This has now squared that away. Now we need to take the second part of the earnings portion for the denominator, which is taking the sum of this earnings value over the past 252 days for an earnings TTM. So there I'll say earnings TTM for the trailing 12 months and sum of that same earnings value over the past year, 252 trading days. Let me output this so you can see what that looks like now. If I click apply, you'll see earnings TTM, that value holds true all the way throughout the chart. So this value is always true and this gives you a sum of what 
your earnings is trailing 12 months leading up to that current juncture. So right now, for example, inside of Starbucks, that earnings TTM value is tr uh, at 3.32. That's the actual value of that variable. So let's combine that with price now to see what is the PE ratio inside of Starbucks that we see. So I'll say def PE close divided by earnings TTM. T so we have our price and we have the earnings value. Let's output this. If I click apply here, what you should see inside of these yellow bubbles is the actual PE ratio of Starbucks. And you can see how that's varied over time. This is part of that context. For example, during March of 2020, that PE ratio went all the way down to the 19s, 19.70. If we take a look at what the PE ratio is currently trading at, it's near 21.6657. So while, say, Starbucks, if I get rid of this study just for a second here, has hit its 1272, pulled back all the way down to its 50% retracement, we're also seeing the PE ratio is getting pretty close to the PE that we had in the March 2020 low. So I think this is where this information becomes useful. It's not just looking at the PE alone, but combining that with technicals to try and find some undervalued places. Now let's come back inside of that code. Let me bring that back in, PE ratio, and let's continue tweaking this some more. So as of right now, we have this value plotting only as a chart bubble. Let me get rid of that since I know that's a little bit annoying. And we can turn this to now plot a little bit neater. First thing we can do is declare this to be lower since we'd always like this indicator on the lower pane of our thinkorswim platform. You'll see that in just a second. And now here we can turn our def for our PE ratio into a plot variable which will now plot as a line. So this is that same historical context of Starbucks. You can see how that PE ratio has changed over time. This is 2016, 2018, 2017, 2019, 2020. You can see how that PE ratio fluctuates, what happened in 2020 in terms of that PE ratio accelerating, and now where that PE ratio is coming back to and where you might try and uh, start to find places what you would consider to be undervalued. Now let's plot that same PE ratio out as a label as well. If you haven't already seen the label tutorial, I think you'd find that to be useful in understanding how to use and plot labels. I'll go through this one a little quicker. Add label. Uh, we'll plot this label to always be true. We'll say inside of the label PE ratio plus PE and we'll make this label white. If I click apply, we can now see we have the PE ratio plotting right down here as we would expect, 21.6657. And before we get too carried away, let me show you what Yahoo Finance's value is. Yahoo Finance has a PE ratio of 19.19, Wall Street Journal 19.26, and what we're currently seeing inside of Thinkorswim, 21.6657. So while it's close, there is a slight discrepancy there, if you will. However, there is a benefit here in that now that all of this data, the historical data is in Thinkorswim, we can start to compare the same data against what we have here historically. So let me show you what I mean by that. Say you wanted to see what has the lowest PE here been inside of Starbucks over the past 10 years. So coming back in our code here, to define that, I'll say def lowest PE, I'll use the lowest all function, which is built inside of Thinkorswim, and there I'll plug in the PE value. I'll take the same label output, and instead of saying PE ratio here, I'll say lowest PE, get rid of the word ratio, and there we can output lowest PE. I'll make this set of labels yellow, and along with lowest, I'll also add in highest. So now we have context for both up and down in terms of what has been the absolute most expensive Starbucks has been along with the absolute cheapest Starbucks has been in historical terms. So if I plug in our highest PE now in our label as well here, so if I take <clears throat> highest PE, and highest PE. Okay, so now if I click apply, we have a little bit more context. So we can see Starbucks here currently is trading at a 21.6657 PE. 
The lowest, according to our thinkorswim calculation, has been 10.7916, and the highest has been 120.755, which you can see happen right here, which was April of 2021. So that was when it was most expensive, and our lowest was a little bit further back historically. Now, if you wanted to expand this, let's say, from 10 years to 20 years worth of data, I can just change that up here in the time frame. Just like that, you can see our variable calculations here will adapt as well. We can see the highest PE will no longer plot since we don't have data before 2008, but we still have the current PE along with what that lowest PE has been going back even further than what our 10-year data was going back to. I'll leave this to 10 for the time being, and we can continue working with our data for one last calculation, which is going to be the median PE. And here I'll use the median function, plug in PE, and create one last label. And there we'll say median PE plus median PE. And we can make this one color.cyan. Or actually, let's try and make this maybe even a little bit smarter. We can say if our PE right now is less than or equal to median PE, then color.light green, else color.light red. And that way, at least this label changes colors somewhat dynamically to give you a first inclination of are we in somewhat of a territory of being undervalued. So in this case, Starbucks current PE ratio is 21.6657. The lowest PE has been 10.7916. The highest PE over the 10 years, 120.755. And our median PE was 21.97, and Starbucks is currently trending under that. Now, if I change this just to make sure there's no bug with that median, maybe we go to something like Costco. Costco currently trading at a 34 PE. The lowest has been 16, uh, the highest 49, and our median 39.95. So currently below the median, but in terms of comparing to the lowest PE, we still have a little bit more to go. So at least this helps in terms of understanding a baseline starting point of what is considered to be undervalued. I hope you found this tutorial to be useful. For those of you that do enjoy data, I think you would find applying the same calculations on the PE, maybe taking this one step further, applying, say, range calculations, things of that nature, to then try and understand what you consider to be undervalued. All right, take care, everyone. Good luck trading, and I'll see you in the next update.